Ted, YouTube, bothered or not? Or bothered? Not bothered. Right, there you go. Right, so today we're going to talk about a topic that I think can get overlooked in the game of golf and probably then overused in the game of golf. And I don't know if people really know what it means. So today's subject is hip depth and creating hip depth in the golf swing. What can it do? What does it do? Can it help you? Let's have a little look. Right, so let's keep this pretty simple. Hip depth, by definition, what does it mean? Well, to be honest with you, it could probably mean different things to different golf coaches. This is what I'm gonna define it to me, and hopefully this helps you at least take your own perception on it. If I stand relatively square to this alignment stick that's in the ground, I want you to understand that that alignment stick is gonna divide my body into two sides. So I've got stuff that happens in front of it, so relative to this, let's call this a center line to my body. I've got the golf club in hand in front of me at address. At some point, with a relatively normal turn, my golf swing will move behind that alignment stick at the top of the backswing. Now, that's gone from in front of me to behind me. So it's gone from in front to creating depth. I use a depth of perception as an idea of the center line as my body. So hip depth, by definition, would be where my trail hip or lead hip points at certain points in the golf swing. So as I turn, you can see my hip is now moved behind me, creating hip depth. As a pointer, you can see my hip depth has created quite a lot of depth on the way back at this point. If I had no hip depth, I would be around sort of the level to where I started. People like Jason Day might be a very good advocate for something with people that have no hip depth on the way back. People that have a lot of hip depth might be someone like Dustin Johnson. He would create a lot of hip depth. Hip depth is just a definition of the way the hips move relative to where you've started. So as I turn my pelvis, ideally I would see some, I guess, more hip depth or the idea of my right hip moving behind me. Now to keep it really, really simple as well, does that help you? Should it help you? Should this be something you put in your game? Should it not? Is it a waste of time? Is it just a term? Biomechanically, if you're going to turn, if you're going to have your game based upon an idea of turning through the shot or rotary, anything along those lines, the ideas of turning has to come from the pelvis because effectively what you do in your lower half, so what you do in your pelvis, can dictate and control what you're doing up above. You can dictate what you're doing in your shoulders. Now what you'll see here is if I just drop on a pelvis against my pelvis, drop on an alignment stick against my pelvis, and I slowly but surely slide down the alignment stick until I touch the edge of my pelvis. Okay, so there you go. That is pretty much defining my pelvis. Now, if I leave my hands where they are, okay, that's the outskirt of my pelvis, and I turn my pelvis, you can see that my hands and my trail hip now work away from each other. So as I turn into my backswing, I'm gonna create a small gap or pocket of air in this area. Okay, so there's one example. So as I turn again, you're gonna see that pocket of air. Again, the same as likewise if I turn to my left. Now that's because as I turn, I'm hopeful that my pelvis is wider from a frontal view than it is from this angle. So as I turn, as my pelvis fundamentally turns, you're going to see a bit of gap being created between side to side. Now that is not just for golf, that is every element of the game of golf. That is that's something we just can't fight or get away from. So when we talk about hip depth, it is just the functionality of the way in which the pelvis turns or loads in the golf swing and as you can see it definitely if i did nothing more than just ask myself to turn my pelvis as much as i can in my backswing you would see a big turn okay very simple again if i was to set up next to this alignment stick so you can see my hip is pretty much now in that alignment stick and as i turn and if i get my right leg to straighten as a result i definitely back away from it now I'm not trying to get my right hip to straighten. I'm not trying to get my left knee to soften. So I'm not trying to see that type of move, yet it's a natural function. As I turn, my pelvis will work behind me and my right leg will straighten and my left knee will soften. Likewise, on the way through. But I've definitely then still got the ideas of, I've got to push pressure into my trail side. So as I take my backswing, I'm not just turning. I am actually trying to move pressure into my trail side. And then I can't balance that with a hip turn. So I definitely feel like I'm loading right as I turn, which keeps me very, very stable and 
sort of on top of the golf ball. So hip depth for me is not, could it help someone? It, it's a necessary element. Now the amount of hip turn you put into it, the amount of hip turn that is relevant for you can change hand plane. So for example, the more hip turn I've got, if I had a relatively normal golf swing, let's say I had probably the most normal golf swing on the planet where I didn't manipulate anything, which is impossible. We all manipulate in some, de some degree, but let's say that my upper body only ever listened to my pelvis. So the more that I got my pelvis to rotate, my hands went behind me. But let's say I wanted to hit a fade or wanted to get away from a bit of a tilt and a hook on the way down. Is creating hip depth a good idea? Because the more hip depth I get, so the more my hips work behind me, the more my hands work behind me. So all of a sudden now I've got a bigger job to get them out. But that's when you'd have a conversation about, okay, let's keep hip depth, but make sure your hands are a little bit more in front of you. So someone like DJ would keep their hands a bit more in front of them and therefore they would have a little bit easier chance to get the golf club back on plane. I think hip depth is there for everybody. It helps everybody, but there's definitely ideas of what parts of hip depth work and what parts don't. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you some examples of players that on tour that use hip depth to their advantage and how they balance out. There are so many different ways for you to match up your golf swing. I do think that if you don't put a certain element of hip depth in, a certain element of ideas of allowing this trail hip to work behind you in the backswing, you could be in pain, you could be damaging your lower back and it's very, very strenuous to try and make a full turn when you just resist your pelvis. I mean, that's me resisting my pelvis and I can barely get anywhere. If I just turn to the max at the top of the backswing, right, move my pelvis, I feel so much strain on the back of my sort of lower back, in, even into my glutes. For example, for me, someone like Jason Day, there on in has got a glass back. But if you take a look at his golf swing, and we'll have a look at it now, for me, it just holds too much right leg flexion. It doesn't really allow this right knee to come out of its flexion. So he's setting up Jason Day, he's got a great golf swing, plenty of speed, but he keeps a lot of flex or load in this right knee. Now he's got to have great flexibility and just in general, to get the golf club where he gets it. But I think if he just let his right knee work behind him a little bit, right, leg, right knee to extend to work behind him, give himself some space. I think you take the pressure off and you might even pick up club head speed. So hip depth is just the idea of that hip moving behind you. And we just about beat the wind. But hip depth is something I think everybody could benefit from. Let me know if that answers a few questions. I've had that a few times. I think everybody can define hip depth differently, but I think we should all define it as something that could be useful. Then you've just got to match it up. Let's have a little look. Right guys, we've got two examples to look at now. We've got Jason Day and Dustin Johnson. Two phenomenal players, two guys at the summit of this sport. But for me, two very, very different ideas of the way in which they perceive the game to be played or even technically, especially when it comes to creating hip depth or using their hips in the golf swing and especially in the backswing. Now, for me, Jason Day is a phenomenal player, but he is very much injury prone and his technique when you take a proper look at it, it is a little bit based upon hand timing. Easy to say from a sort of a seat in an office, but if he was just to create a little more hip depth, he might see a little bit less injury and maybe a little more distance. So let's take a little look at the two examples. You've got Jason Day on the left and you've got Dustin Johnson on the right. Now, if we take Jason Day from an address position, you can see both players have got very, very similar ideas of knee flex held at address. So very, very similar ideas. If you take Jason Day to the top of the backswing, we're going to see very, very similar creation in that trail leg at the top of the backswing, limited to no hip depth has been created. Yet, if you take Dustin Johnson to the top of the backswing, take a look at his trail leg. He's in a flex state of around 154, 155. Now, camera angles I've tried to create very, very similar angles for both players. But if you take DJ to the top of the backswing, you're going to see a very, very different look of that trail leg. That trail leg starts to straighten and that hip pocket starts to move behind him. You can see the difference in the evidence at the top of the backswing. Now, that trail leg has now moved into a very, very different state and it's completely changed its flex. It's gone from 154 to 170, subject to where you pop that line. But you can definitely see some evidence in the way that trail leg has worked, those hips have opened, and that trail hip has moved behind him. Now, for me, not only does that help DJ stay injury free, it allows him to create more width, it allows him to create more speed, a bigger turn, and then in turn, help him to shallow out the golf club in the downswing sequence. So if you take a look at both players now, on the way down, obviously DJ's got a different set of wrist structures, 
but you're going to see a very, very shallow delivery method and one that is proven him to be a worthy winner week after week, year after year. Jason Day, a little bit more subject to, I guess, injuries and timing. If you take him on the way down, you're going to see a very, very different look of the way the shaft is pitched relative to DJ. Now we take a look at those two snapshots and you think both players are tethering around 120 to 125 clubhead speed. Take a little look at the way in which you'd want to swing it. For me, I would all day long want to be like DJ, but he's creating more hip depth. He's protecting his back and he's giving himself room to deliver the golf club in a way that is going to maximize his delivery. For me, most people would benefit, not everybody, and this is not for, for everybody, but most people would benefit from creating a certain amount of hip depth. Again, that's going to be relative to your own flexibility and what you can bring to the table. But looking at the two guys at the summit of their sport and one guy that is arguably achieving everything we hope he would and one guy that may be underachieving, I think hip depth is something that is real and I think it would work for everybody. Now, if you like that sort of video and you want to see more of this sort of content, let me know. Drop a message in the box and let me know what else you'd like to see. But in the meantime, have a think about your hip depth. Could you change it? Could you look at it? Do you have a back problem? That could be your answer.